don't look so frightened. It was only a jest. <laughs> Come here. So, they sent you in here to clean the presence chamber, did they? <laughs> you weren't expecting me. I have become quite clever at slipping away for a few moments when I grow weary of the constant chatter of courtiers. I hid here because it's the last place they'd expect me to be. <laughs> the only person whose presence I could stand at the moment is Lester's. He's busy pulling all the strings as usual. Robert Dudley, first Earl of Leicester, privy councillor and favourite of the Queen. No? Where on earth did you come from, you ignorant little fool? No, oh, don't look like that. I like your face. Oh, it's the face of a commoner, to be sure, but perhaps properly dressed and with the hair. Hmm. Would you like to marry a privateer? We'll speak of that later, if I remember. Anyway. Lester is a fool. Fifteen years ago, his wife Amy died in a strange fall from a flight of stairs at Cumnor Place. Since then, he has thought to marry me. But I shall never marry. I will not subjugate myself to a man. I will not give up my freedom, my independence, my power, myself. But if it were to be any man, in private, I call him my sweet Robin, and he calls me Bess. I made him the Earl of Leicester, so publicly, I call him Leicester because I made him that. I did that. I still remember how he said to me, The Earldom of Leicester. Bess, I cannot thank you enough. He has been asking me to marry him for years. Marry me, Bess. And there was a time when I thought, perhaps, but never mind. Once I thought I would marry him off to my foolish cousin Mary, solve that little problem, but it never came to be. I changed my mind. So, she stays in her enforced residence in Scotland, and Lester stays here. At arm's length, but within arm's reach. Just where I want him. In July, he staged a spectacular festival at Kenilworth Castle in my honour. There were all kinds of marvellous things. There was a papier-mâché dolphin with a little orchestra in its belly. There was dancing, hunts, masks, everything to delight. And, as predicted, there he was at the end of the festivities with another variation on the eternal question. My good Queen Elizabeth, I have come to once again ask for your hand. Our friend Christopher Hatton was only too quick to chime in on his behalf, so, of course, Lester echoed. He's right, you know, Bess. You should marry me. Why do I speak so often of Lester? What is he to me, really? What is he indeed? Bess, marry me. Look, I am told that the royalty and nobility of faraway cafe paint their fingernails, so I thought I would try it too. The color reminds me of my favorite confection. Would you like a candied violet? Go on, try one. I love them. Mm. I used to have them imported from France. But then I decided to save time and have the confectioner imported from France and installed in my own palace kitchens. My physicians tell me they'll rot my teeth, but look at them. Strong as iron. This? 
This is a Tudor rose. A Tudor rose? Ugh. The Wars of the Roses raged for 30 years between the houses of York and Lancaster. My grandfather, Henry Tudor of the House of Lancaster, ended those wars with his victory at Bosworth Field and his marriage to my grandmother, who was a Yorkist princess. Once the two houses were united, the Tudor Rose was born. It was worn by my grandfather, my father, and now by me. Do you know it has been 90 years since that famous victory at Bosworth Field? <laughs> and I was born 48 years after that, so even simple mathematics will tell you I am no longer young. Oh, everyone pretends I haven't aged. Even my ladies in waiting who have seen me without this paint, but this isn't even my real hair. To be sure, when I was 25 and I came to the throne, I had bright red hair, but it's faded somewhat. Now I rely on the youthful attributes of others. The people of England need their queen to have bright red hair, apparently. Reminds them that I'm Henry's daughter. I still have suitors, you know, from foreign royal houses. Who wouldn't want to marry the Queen of England, aging or not? I've heard that the Duke of Anjou is being groomed to court me. Oh, France has never ceased to want my throne. <sighs> Poor thing, he's only twenty. I'd seem ancient to him. Lester is against it, of course. Bess, I cannot consider without great repugnance that you should choose another husband. They accuse me of stringing them all along, my suitors. And it's true. I play the game of being courted, but I shall never marry. Something else I'll tell you, because no one will believe you if you repeat it. I'm dreadfully lonely. Oh yes, of course I'm constantly surrounded by courtiers, but the communion of souls is what I crave. Lester is the closest thing I have, but if only we could just run away together, be a simple man and woman. Sometimes I grow weary of always being strong and clever. Did you know that his apartments at court are always next to mine? I will not say that in certain palaces there is not a door adjoining them. Bess, marry me. But, as I grow older, a curious thing has happened. The people, once so eager for me to marry and unite England to a foreign power, now begin to respect me in my own right. <laughs> my ministers have done nothing to quell this sort of cult that sprung up around me. Gloriana, they call me, the Virgin Queen. Well, that's a secret they'll never truly know, but symbolism is important to keep the country united. I'll show you what I mean. Turn around, look. This is a portrait from eight years ago. I had just recovered from a brush with death after I fell ill with smallpox. England had descended into a brief state of chaos during my illness, and I had to reassert my authority. The red and white dress represents the unity of the houses of York and Lancaster, and you see I'm wearing the Tudor rose. And then the fertility. Ah, the endless and irritating talk of my fertility. The Dean of St. Paul's dared to say to me, All the Queen's most noble ancestors have commonly had some issue to succeed them, but Her Majesty none. The want of your marriage and issue is like to prove a great plague. If your parents had been of your mind, where had you been then? So, we had to send a message. In the background there is a tree bearing fruit, meant to advertise my fertility. Really, like some sort of cow at auction. In my right hand is a gillyflower, meant to represent betrothal and hint at an impending marriage. 
Of course, there were no marriage plans of any kind, but it was enough to stop the questions for a while, at least. But things have changed since then. This portrait was done this year, and it's my favorite. No ridiculous symbolism here. Just me looking queenly and frightening. Speaking of portraits, Lester has asked for a miniature of me all for himself. With my hair down. My real hair, he says. I don't know how he dares to ask for such things. Lester speaks to me as no one else may. I'll never stop asking, so you may as well relent. Bess, marry me. He does make me laugh. As we both begin to grow older, he still asks me to marry him, but he also makes jests about it. I don't mean to hurry you, Bess, but um, I'm not sure how long I've got left. I won't be able to walk up the aisle at this point. So what do we say? Are we on for marriage? Oh, best, best, best. Why don't you just, I don't know, marry me? And sometimes, he's all too serious. Ah, what would I do if you would marry me, Bess? I talk about him too much. I think about him too much. I allow too much. I speak seven languages. English, of course. Welsh, Greek, Latin, Spanish, French, and Italian. But somehow, none of those contain the words to tell him how I truly feel. Nor do I know whether he truly returns my affections. Does he want me for me? Or for the crown? The two cannot be separated. Even I do not know where the crown ends and the woman begins. The male favorite to a virgin queen. It's not an easy life for him either. I stand on the top of the hill where the smallest slip seemeth the fall. I may fall many ways, and have more witnesses thereof than many others, who perhaps be no saints either. For my faults, they lie before him, who I have no doubt, but will cancel them as I have been, and shall be more heartily sorry for them. I know he would like to marry and have children if he cannot marry me, but I cannot let him go. I heard that he said, You, you must, must think, think it's so a marvelous hard. cause that forceth me thus to be cause almost of the ruin of mine own house. My brother, you see, long married and not like to have children. It resteth so now in myself. And yet such occasion there is. As if I should marry, I am sure never to have the Queen's favour. And it's true. If he married, I could not bear to look at him. Bess? Ah, there you are. Well, I am found out. See that this room is well cleaned, and certainly don't help yourself to the wine. Come along, Bess. Everyone is waiting. Yes, Robin. Mm -hmm.